Okay, so juicing versus jelly juice. So we understand the distinction and I'm making this for my public Facebook so people can see why there's a difference between like the Gerson method and then jelly juice, okay? So let's pretend that the Gerson method is going to take into account probiotics and salt along with the purine or the juicing of the vegetables. Well, they are still functional silos, okay? So first, before we get to the functional silos, what are functional silos? When there's definite, definitive silos that work great into, unto themselves, by themselves, but in order for them to actually work really, well, really, really well, effectively, there has to be cross-functional communication between the functional silos. So let's look real quick before we get to the functional silos and how we then establish cross-functional communication is understanding first why we are understanding these components of juicing versus jelly juice. So we have established that there's a trinity of life and the trinity of death. The trinity of life, trinity of death is yeast, antibodies, and hormones. And so once you understand that yeast can become imbalanced based upon the imbalances of the body, antibodies can become very imbalanced, whether you have underproduction or overproduction, if you have an imbalance in that area of, of antibodies, then you have issues. And then hormones can be imbalanced relative to what they are being used for. So we've established that the trinity of life and the trinity of death is yeast, antibodies, and hormones. So now let's look at the Gerson method, the juicing. Well, we've already established that fruit juices do feed cancer slash candida slash yeast, okay? And so when you're taking an inordinate amount of a fruit juice or any type of simple sugar or complex carbohydrates, and you're not balancing out with the other elements out there, you're going to have an imbalance. So, of course, if you're going to be juicing your fruit and you're fighting cancer, you're not going to win because you're feeding the cancer with the fruit juices. And that's no different than any other processed, you know, white sugar, any honey, any sugar substitutes, stevia, it doesn't matter. Any type of sugar. Now we need sugar, but when you are when you have a major imbalance, it does not make sense to be drinking large amounts of fruit juices or any type of Coke, Pepsi, whatever, when you are fighting cancer. Because cancer is yeast with pathogens docked to it with viruses that are changing the cell structures. And then your, your diet is then multiplying these cancer cells. Okay? So... So now let's look at juicing the vegetables. Now, I don't know how many people have ever juiced like um, cabbage or kale. I guess there's ways to do it. I've never done any kind of juicing of a cabbage or kale or any kind of cruciferous vegetables. I've heard of the people juicing their carrots, which does have a lot amount of sugar. Um, you guys can tell me what exactly vegetables that you have juiced, okay? I mean, there's, I guess you can find all the different vegetables out there and you juice it, but are you going to get the amount of nutrition in that little, I mean, because really when you look at it, the, uh, when you juice a vegetable, it's mostly fiber. I mean, you'll get a little bit of juice out of it, but when you juice vegetables, you're throwing away major components of nutritional benefits that you're not ever going to be deriving any kind of nutritional benefit from because you're throwing it away because your body can't seem to process it. Why do people juice? Because their bodies are mutated and they're not processing things at an exponential level to be able to break it down to have access to the nutrients. So what does the Gerson method do? They go and juice everything. Yes, Joanne Creamer, even with celery juicing as well. Okay, because I mean, yes, celery is full of water, but it's also can be by itself. It's very, it's, it's used as a spice. Celery is very pungent. Okay, when you eat celery on its own, it's diluted by the, the water that's in it. But when you actually juice a celery juice, you're not, I mean, you're getting nutritional benefit, but you're not getting maximum. And you know, it's not just celery nutrients that your body needs. I mean, yeah, if you just straight up just juice your vegetables and eat nothing else, you're going to see changes 
superficial changes in your body, but it's only going to be superficial, no different than when someone goes from a, from a standard American processed food diet to then go eating organic only, they're going to see superficial changes. They're going to see, yes, certain symptoms reverse and disappear, but the aging process is still there because they haven't fixed their mutations. So let's take the Jilly Juice and let's separate the components out of Jilly Juice and then try to apply the Gerson method. Okay, so you have, so you understand that lactobacillus is a probiotic and it can be created from sugar and salt and then vinegar. So those are three things that lactobacillus can grow from. But we've already established that sugar with lactobacillus, the sugar is going to feed the cancer. So there's, it doesn't make sense to be fermenting fruit when you're only feeding the cancer. That lactobacillus is not going to have any effect when you're also feeding cancer. The vinegar where you can create lactobacillus through like apple cider vinegar is then the fermented ethanol, which is also antibiotic in of itself. And it's used like in alcohols, like in alcohol, and alcohol isn't good for your body or your system over a long period of time. And so that will also undermine any progress that lactobacillus could potentially have. Then you have the, I guess, the milk, but milk has sugars in it. Okay, so when you have the yogurt, the acidophilus, and then even like the kefir, the grains, they have sugar in it too. So if you try to just, you know, implement like kefir and apple cider vinegar or kefir, you know how you say it, um, milk, like yogurt or coconut, because people are trying to ferment coconut to make like a coconut yogurt, but that's still sugar. And then you're trying to then juice your vegetables, but then where does the salt come in? Okay, then maybe you're putting salt in your juiced vegetables. So there isn't really a cross-functional communication because you're not getting enough nutri nutri nutritive benefit out of the juiced vegetables. You're not getting, you're not going to be, you know, it's going to be too salty for you. So you're going to be cutting down the salt no matter what. And you want to you know how much salt to put into your, your juiced vegetable. And then the uh, lactobacillus, how much are you going to be, you know, no matter what, I mean, you're going to be undermining, so you're not going to get enough of the lactobacillus. So those three areas in their functional silos are not going to be cross-functionally communicating really effectively, okay? And that's essentially what goes on in the allopathic holistic world. They're taking, three, they're taking components that are really great unto themselves, and they're trying to apply them, but there really isn't effective cross-functional communication between those three components that that would try to emulate jelly juice, but it really couldn't because it's not actually working together. There are three separate things that people are trying to put together if they were trying to implement and separate out jelly juice and apply like the Gerson method, okay? So with jelly juice, then you have, so this is what you have, you have an actual, those three components being able to cross-functionally communicate. So when you have the cabbage and all the nutritive benefits of the cabbage, this is why when I showed you guys earlier that picture of the nine-month ferment and how it were, they were cabbage leaves, they were full cabbage leaves at one point. And then the chemical process of the salt and the lactobacillus breaking down those cabbage leaves to where now it's, it is so broken down into a drinkable extract. Okay, but there wasn't any harsh chemicals to break it down. All it was was the salt, which is the electrolytes, the temperature, which is what obviously is, takes into account chemistry. Chemistry and temperature go hand in hand, of course. Okay, um, the probiotics, how do probiotics get created? Because it's from the nutritive element, and salt creates probiotics as well. And so, um, the cabbage and kale create that allowance for probiotics and lactobacillus. And then you have the water as a component, as a carrier force. And so all of those three things, the, the nutritive element, the electrolytes, and the lactobacillus, all of that work together. There is, and they're working, they're not in separate little functional silos being taken separately. They're all in one drink living and creating symbiotically together. So with the J juice, you're not having three separate methods all trying to work together. Oh no, it's different. J juice is everything is in one glass, in one jar, cross-functionally communicating. And when your body takes it in, it doesn't have to break it down. You're not working against any other elements that could be undermining your process. 
And so this is why J-Juice is so effective because you don't have to break anything down. You're getting all the benefit. You're getting all the benefit from the cabbage. You're not throwing away all of this fibrous stuff. When people juice stuff, they're throwing away probably 90% of the nutrients and the vegetable. Their body actually we should derive nutrition from. This is why it's such a waste to juice. And that's why I never got into the expellers and all those different juicing things that they do in the holistic world because they're throwing away 90% of what they could, their body could be using. So when, I, when you look at my, my ferment today, that nine-month ferment, that whole cabbage leaf is being used. Right, Joanne, right, absolutely. So you're utilizing the whole vegetable, not throwing away most of it because you want to get a little bit of juice because you think that's what's supposed to be. The Gerson method wastes all that nutrition when you could be deriving benefit from it, okay? So with the J-juice, that whole cabbage is being broken down. So I don't even throw away the core. That whole cabbage is being used. Okay, and so I chop everything up, I put it through the, you know, the puree with the salt in the water, and then it goes through a chemical process called fermentation. The whole vegetable is being used, everything's being broken down to a pre-digested state, so that way when you drink it, which you saw how cloudy that nine-month ferment was, when you drink it, you're getting all of the nutrients, and your body doesn't have to work hard breaking it down, and you're getting the maximum nutritive um, benefit elements from it because you're not throwing away anything. See, that's the difference between juicing with the Gerson method when you're throwing away 90% of the vegetable in the pulp versus J juice where you're actually breaking everything down and you're not wasting any part of the vegetable. And then you're allowed to actually drink the whole vegetable without your body going through and trying to break it down. Because most of you, if not all of you, have mutated systems where you're only absorbing I can't even say how much you're absorbing, but I don't even want to put a percentage on there. But the fact that we're aging and degrading, the fact that you've reached a certain point of maturity, and then now you're degrading, you're seeing your hair going gray, you're seeing your skin going crazy, people are doing facials and all these things to keep up with the younger people, you're seeing that you're not actually maximizing or deriving 100% nutritional benefit from your food supply. You're only getting just enough to keep you alive until you start seeing your body break down. And then this is where the death happens because you're not getting maximum absorption. You're actually dealing with malabsorption. So with the J juice, you're able to now absorb, even on a mutated body, no different than mother's milk, and your body is able to repair. So that way you can then derive maximum absorption in the food supply without having to break everything down to a baby type food state. So J juice is like baby food. It's like mother's milk to a baby. That's what J-Juice is because we are degrading as humans, as adults. We're going back to now that um, helpless infantile state. But even though we're not babies, being an elderly person in this society is no different than going to a nursery and making sure the babies are taken care of, fed, their butts wiped and clothed and protected. Okay? And so we are now figuring out that we've got to go back to the middle. Absolutely right, you know, Michael. I love the pulp too. We are going back to the middle. We're understanding the extreme sides of being born and then aging is a sign of the body either developing or degrading. And that's based upon the body hasn't received all the nutrition yet on the baby side. And so it's developing on the geriatric side. You're not absorbing the nutrition and you need to. So on both ends of the spectrum, you get maximum nutrition. Guess what? The baby and the geriatric adult will then finally come somewhere in the middle to where they don't ever have to die or be in that crazy developmental state of growing up. And that is what balance is. Right now, humanity is severely imbalanced. I-M-B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D. And all of our cancer, disease, and chronic illness is a sign of imbalances. And so this is why J-Juice is so revolutionary because it's not trying to deal with different functional silos and trying to put them all together without really understanding that there has to be an effective cross-functional communication. And this is the upset of homeostasis 
that I've been dealing with. What is upset of homeostasis? When people are so settled in the science they know at the time, and then somebody comes in and says, hey, hold on a second, maybe we shouldn't die, maybe we shouldn't have this, or we shouldn't have that, whatever, and then people are tripping the hell out. No different than when you take in nutrition that your body ordinarily did not receive before, your body now is trying to heal, and you don't understand the symptoms and the mechanism that goes on behind it. So you're all scared thinking that pain is something horrible when actually, no, it's something that your body needs to go through. It's called the prostaglandin hormone that is being suppressed if you're not feeling pain or if you're trying to suppress pain. Okay, so you can't prevent pain and you can't prevent pathogens. So what do you got to do? You got to get your system well balanced. How do you get it well balanced? It's access to nutrition and it has to be effective nutrition, not just juicing your vegetables, not just drinking a some probiotic concoction that's made in biotech. It's not just eating your vegetables. Okay, there is a actual chemical process that allows you to take advantage of the electrolytes, the nutrition and the probiotics because probiotics by itself keeps the yeast at bay. So that way you don't have an over accumulation of yeast. But what cancer is, is when you have an overabundance of antibodies, which are basically viruses and pathogens that dock to the yeast. Why do they dock to the yeast? Because you're not expelling the way that you should. People have um, constipated lymphatic system, constipated digestive systems. So they're harboring, holding on to shit, as well as other pathogens, not releasing correctly. So where do the pathogens do? They have nowhere else to go, but cannibalize you. And this is the aging process. This is cancer disease and chronic illness. And this is why I've been so steadfast in my journey. I've made some mistakes. I've said things I probably shouldn't have said as far as um, making absolutes, but I've since corrected that. The science isn't settled around sexual orientation. The science isn't settled around race. The science isn't settled around anything. We don't know what normal is. We are so heavily mutated that there's no way to say anything in our society is normal. So we need to have access to nutrition to figure out what normal is. And right now at this point, we talked about my group about um, mutations and pigmentation and that maybe uh, the lack of pigmentation is a mutation and so I mean I'm not trying to create a race war here but we really need to look at what humans were originally intended so that way we're not scared of the uh, the healing process and so we're not then too worried about what's supposed to be we just go with the flow when you have access to nutrition, you just go with the flow. There is no absolutes, none. You know, I've made some assertions and theories that say, okay, you know, if somebody is 100% um, healthy, they would never get their period. They wouldn't want to be sexual or procreate or anything like that. And I don't know for sure. Now, I mean, like, okay, you know, since we do live in a pathogenic society, we do live in a very advanced society with lots of different elements fluctuating, the body would probably keep an insurance policy. So you most likely, I mean, maybe there's a time, maybe there would be a time if we didn't have so much advancements and, and pathogens that maybe a woman would never get her period because she'd be the best copy of herself. But at this point, it's so hard to say because there's so many factors that we are up against that would probably keep the insurance policy of your period but maybe down the road who knows i don't know maybe i would not have my period down the road i can't say but i would i would make that theory that potentially in a perfect world a woman wouldn't get her period wouldn't want to procreate or anything because she'd be the best copy of herself because it's all based upon nature and all that stuff and what would cause um reproduction and so these are the things that kind of got me in trouble a little bit in the past because I've been make, I was making absolutes on what was normal and what was not, but now it comes down to you know we don't know what normal is. We don't know what the right model is as far as humans. Could it be like back in the Jesus days when it could be Mother Mary of God, Parthenogenesis, Immaculate Conception, and then maybe at some point it's split to male and female. Maybe you know who? It's so hard to say. So you know. It's all still a period of exploration. We're all still just trying to discover and figure out what our bodies are meant to be, but we have to make distinctions and understand what is antibiotic, what is probiotic, uh, what does the food supply do to the body, and especially when you're in balance, what are you bringing to the table? Why are some people more sensitive to other things? 
um, why, why are some people more sensitive to this versus you know another person who's not as sensitive to that? I mean, it's uh, we have to take that into account. And it's time for the industries out there to take that into account too, to figure out who their client base is and cater to it. So, you know, things that weren't, things that were maybe potentially poisonous today weren't poisonous 40 years ago because the humans weren't that mutated. But now humans are a bit more mutated. So yeah, now things that weren't as poisonous back then are probably poisonous now because of how sensitive our bodies are to the environment and to everything else because of sustained generational mutations. And that's all I'm simply trying to do is just figure out what the deal is, okay? And so right now I'm going through my book and the one that's out on the market now and I'm definitely taking things out and you know, reconfiguring my my tone, my thought process and it's, you know, so you guys are watching this evolution of these ideas and then me bouncing them off with you like in real time. OK, but some but we, we have got to figure out why people are dying. We have to. OK, forget the politics, forget all the stuff that has divided and conquered us. We seriously have to figure out what is causing the death in our humanity. And if we don't, you know, it, it, it would be detrimental for you as well as the human race if we don't get this figured out. And we don't allow the divide and conquer and the politics to stop human ingenuity and creativity and discovery okay this is what the human race is all about is discovering new things not getting stuck in a thought process that offers no progress okay so anyways i wanted to kind of put that out there as far as juicing versus jelly juice it's different very different okay you guys have a great day thanks joanne thanks all bye